Good morning. My name is Gardner Campbell. I'm Dean of University College at Virginia Commonwealth University. And I'm talking today with Dr. David Wiley, who's the Chief Academic Officer of Lumen Learning and also the host, primary planner, and visionary behind a whole set of open education conferences that have been going on for some time. And uh, David, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the history of the Open Education Conference and uh, what you see as the mission of this particular gathering of the tribes. Mm. Well, the history of the conference is that it's uh, 13 years old. This will be our, our 13th annual meeting coming up in November this year, 2016. Uh, it started back when I was at Utah State University. I was an assistant uh, faculty member there, uh, assistant professor, and uh, started very small. I think we had 40 or 50 people at the conference that first year, and over the years it's grown now to be uh, well over 500 people that attend uh, each year from uh, all over the world. Um, you know, the conference really started as an excuse to bring people together who were doing good and interesting work but weren't finding out about the good and interesting work that each other were doing. Um, you know, there was a time when we started the conference where one person who was really paying close attention could track every single open education initiative happening in the world, essentially. And you could make a personal invitation to the head of all those projects to come and get in a room and talk to each other about what they're learning and what they're doing. And, um, you know, as the conference has grown, it's, it, uh, it, it serves a slightly different purpose now than I think it did then. It's now at least as much about trying to enculturate and introduce new people into the open education community as it is kind of exclusively a meeting of kind of folks who've been at it for a while and are thinking really deeply about it. Now it's also a way to introduce people to the idea of open in a way that is responsible and accurate as opposed to the way that open is represented in the popular media and the press sometimes and help them start to absorb the values and uh, you know hear some of the hear some of the leaders in the field speak and also share completely new ideas that uh, hit folks who've been in the field for a long time as being really interesting things that they've never thought of because maybe that you know they've been pursuing a, a particular path or been in the project for so long so really is a nice melting pot of People who are interested in open but don't know anything about it. People have been working in the space for 10 or 15 years, really about sharing ideas and uh, creating energy and giving people the, the kind of battery recharge they need for the next 12 months to get out and keep doing their work. Well, as someone who was new to the conference myself in 2009, the first time I attended, I was struck by many things. It was not only cordial, but it was also a very interesting mix of focus and informality. I, I wonder how you think about that. It's a, a structured experience in many respects, and in other respects, it's kind of a, a serendipity environment. How, how do you how do you manage that? Yeah, well, it, it starts, I think, with our, um, I think broadly, that we, we refer to the conference as the annual family reunion. And uh, we, we say that at the beginning of every year, and it really does have that kind of feel. You know, there's the crazy uncle, and you know, there's whatever going on. Um, but it, it's very much a group of people who really like each other, who love the work that they're doing, care about the work that they're doing. Um, so excited to see new people kind of joining the ranks and taking up the call to, you know, to improve affordability, to reprofessionalize faculty with you know, broader pedagogies that are available to them. And it's very much kind of a team and a community feel. And I, I think that's important to it's a value of the open community. I think you see it reflected in the conference. Um, we do try really hard, but depending on where we are, it, it manifests itself a little differently. But we do try to block out some kind of larger blocks of time when we, we, we plan for nothing to happen. Um, you know, so that th there will still be people who will skip sessions to take opportunities to have that meeting that they wanted to have with that person that they haven't seen in six months or whatever. But we do try really hard either through, um, you know, through going on hikes, which has been really popular in the past, that anybody who wanted to, you know, we'd get on buses and go out somewhere and hike, or we'd go out on a boat and tour around, and, and you know, just nothing planned, everybody together in a space, and uh, try to provide maybe some food or some music, as the case may be, uh, whatever it is. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in how important those connections are, and to be 
to be at a place where there are 500, 600 other people who are in some phase of caring deeply about open and thinking about that and working on it, and only to get to hear from you know, a dozen of them because you spent all of your time listening to people talk in 30 minute blocks or hour long blocks or whatever it is, just it seems like as huge a waste of time to me as the primary planner as I think it does to anyone else. So we always do try very hard to schedule unscheduled time to allow those kinds of conversations and serendipitous sorts of things to happen. Well, it's the first time, to my knowledge, that the conference has come to Richmond, Virginia. Is that correct? That's correct, yep. So we're likely to have a lot of new folks in the mix. We're very excited by the prospect of, I'm particularly excited by the prospect of the Virginia Community Commonwealth System, the State Council of Higher Education for Virginia, Virginia Commonwealth University, all sorts of units uh, potentially in the area and, and perhaps even in the state. Uh, joining in and participating, many of them will be new. So if you could summarize some things that new folks who haven't been to the family reunion before uh, might think about as they make their plans or what they might look forward to or how the conference can be made most fully uh, present uh, to folks who haven't been there before, how would you talk about that? Yeah, I, I guess I would say, um, you know, one, one way to be fully present at the conference, and, and this is exactly the opposite of what uh, I tell my children sometimes, I think, but one way to be fully present is to be you know, sneaking peeks at your device uh, throughout the day because there's quite an active Twitter conversation that will go on at the conference. There's quite a lot of blogging and photo sharing and people reflecting on the session that they just came out of or maybe blogging that happens overnight about sessions they heard the day before. Um, there's, a, there's a very important part of the conference that doesn't physically happen in the building. So I, I think that's one thing uh, to think about in terms of kind of getting the full value of the conference. But I think the second thing would be to just kind of lose or kind of leave at the door all of your personal inhibitions about talking to people that you don't know. Because this is a conference of people who you know, are open, who are trying to share, who are or thinking about ways to more effectively share, to share at bigger scale, and who, you know, largely speaking, if you will hold still, they want to talk to you about open for some period of time. So it's it's not the kind of conference to wander around by yourself and feel lonely and wonder how, you know, you're going to make your way into this community of people. It's a group of people who are excited about the fact that you're new and that you're there, and they want to introduce you to other people who. Maybe you've read a blog about before you followed somebody on Twitter and always wanted to meet them or have always wanted to ask them this one question. Um, it's, it's just not a conference of kind of keeping your head down and walking past in the hallway. It's very much groups of people talking, introducing yourself to new people, uh, playing musical instruments together in impromptu bands uh, or uh, singing karaoke or, you know, whatever it is that's going on. It's very, there's very much a feeling of, group and community and family and if you really want to be part of the experience um, you know I would hope that folks who have been at the conference for several years who wouldn't recognize you might come up and introduce themselves to you and ask you if you're new um, but I'd, I'd hope that people take the initiative too to when you see a group of people it looks like they're having an interesting conversation just walk into the middle of that group and, and see what they're talking about but this isn't a kind of the personalities of the people that attend this conference aren't ones that are going to look at you funny and shun you and, and break up and, and stop what they're talking about. They really do, we really do want to bring new people into the, into the community. One of the things I've always been really struck by in the conference is the way in which those impromptu conversations you're describing typically will include some of the leaders, the, the keynote speakers, the folks who are coming from uh, many different places to bring some of the news about uh, high-level initiatives or to share their own work over many years. Uh, talk about the leaders who come to this conference that, that you select who will be able to bring some of those high-level, sometimes government, sometimes organizational, sometimes grassroots initiatives to a wider audience and how you think about those moments when the entire conference uh, gathers together. Yeah, you know, we, we've taken different approaches to that over the years and are, are still making kind of final decisions about how we'll approach it this year. Um, in the past, there have been some years at Open Ed where uh, we've picked people who are doing kind of parallel work 
it's not strictly speaking right in the core of kind of open education, but, but work that seems like it's really important work that could inform the work the rest of the community is doing. And a keynote address at that point might be kind of introducing everyone in the room to a new discipline that they haven't heard about, to a new body of literature, to a new set of work. And so it, it really is kind of instructional uh, in a way sometimes. Uh, other times we've done, uh, we've taken people with very different perspectives on the same topic and done keynote pairs where we've had them speak back to back. Um, you know, many folks in, in Virginia will know Jim Groom who has a very specific view of, um, you know, maybe a small piece is loosely joined is, is maybe the best way to say it. You know, the more distributed, more emergent kind of approach to things. And uh, a few years ago at Open Ed, we, we paired him with uh, a senior program officer from the Gates Foundation who had a very kind of buttoned down, uh, formal model kind of approach to things, which was, and, and they, they both were great. They're very articulate. They made awesome arguments. And the one kind of sat right in the front row and listened to the one give his talk, and then the other listened to the other. And then you could see them kind of talking together after the talk was over and people crowding around and joining that conversation. So sometimes those keynote experiences are about getting very different views on similar problems directly into dialogue with each other, literally. Um, and that's, you know, that's very fun. Um, you know, it, we, we really do try to program those keynotes in a way that is responsive to what it feels like would be most beneficial to the field at large. You know, what are kind of the opportunities that seem like are open potentially to the field in the next 12 months? What are things that are happening that, happening that maybe we need to respond to in some way? Um, and using this opportunity of having a lot of energy and a lot of, you know, smart and energetic people in a room together to either, you know, make them aware of this new way of thinking about things they haven't thought about before or bring them up to speed on the latest thing that's happened here or get different perspectives going uh, there. Um, you know, we had a keynote a couple of years ago that, you know, the, the keynote, uh, the invitation to the keynote speaker was, there aren't very many people being thoughtfully critical of the work that's happening in, in open ed. They stand up for an hour and just criticize all of us in the room uh, in, in a thoughtful way. And um, you know, so we, we, it's, the keynotes at open ed aren't so much about bringing big name people who are a draw just because of their name, um, like bringing in a Bill Gates or, or something like that. Not that Bill isn't really smart, but, um, but really trying to bring in people and program those keynotes in a way that is going to add something to the momentum and the energy of the field and the, the, the people who are in the room. I've noticed there's also pretty strong international participation in the open ed conferences I've been to. Could you talk a little bit about the way in which this is uh, a kind of a global gathering? Yeah, it really is. Um, and for a long time, it was the only gathering. You know, there were, there were several years where um, we had very high participation in the conference internationally. And in the last, um, I'd say in the last three or four years, you're seeing more kind of regional OER conferences happening in Europe, happening in Africa, ha happening in Asia, um, where sometimes we get to go and participate in those, and sometimes uh, they'll be here. But... I mean, there was a time when Open Ed was probably half people outside the U.S. and half people inside the U.S., and, and it's not that much uh, anymore. Um, you know, there, there are more people in the U.S. interested in Open Ed than ever, and more of them are coming because it's not an international conference and it's hard to get funding to attend those and things like that. But I would say that still, you know, a solid 15% of people at the conference are coming, depending on which coast we're on. You know, we'll be on the East Coast this year, so we'll draw more from Europe than we will from Asia. We were in Vancouver last year, we drew more from Asia, um, just kind of, you know, depending on what's close, closer to get to and easier to get to. Um, but, you know, there's, there's such a different set of issues that people outside the U.S. are thinking about in terms of ways that open is powerful uh, for them and the people that they work with, um, the kinds of problems that they're trying to solve using open as a tool in a very pragmatic way. Um, and it's great to be sitting in a session uh, where everybody thinks they know what they're talking about and you're envisioning this problem in a certain way and then, you know, somebody from Poland or somebody from, from South Africa raises their hand and says, 
you all understand that this is a totally U.S. you know, you know centric perspective on this problem, and we're dealing with this in a completely different way. And um, you know, having those people, having people who can stand almost completely outside of your problem and reflect on it and push on you and give you feedback about it, and then you getting to take a turn listening to something about you know what's happening. Um, what's happening with open courseware in Japan or something like that and being able to stand outside of that and listen to it kind of objectively and push back on it. There's so much value in getting out of the group think a little bit and having folks from outside the perspective adding those uh, you know kind of diverse and completely divergent ways of looking at the problems. Really valuable and super fun. Often some of the the biggest laughs that will happen at the conference and it's a conference where a lot of laughing happens I should say. Um, is when somebody will point out just how tunnel vision we've all gotten around a certain problem because everybody's thinking that the entire universe is made up of East Coast United States community colleges. Well, it turns out there are other ways to look at problems, you know. Um, so it, it's just great to have lots of people from all over the world in a room, kind of all being present, listening to what's being said, and then pushing back uh, or adding, you know, adding other ways of looking at problems. It's tremendously exciting that this experience, this gathering is coming to Richmond, Virginia, November 2nd through 4th, this fall 2016. Uh, I'm already beginning the logistics on the ground preparation for the physical location for the events uh, on the Monroe Park campus of Virginia Commonwealth University. As I mentioned earlier, we're looking forward to participation widely from uh, lots of folks uh, in the region, in terms of uh, particular people nearby, the Virginia Community College System, of course, and the State Council of Higher Education uh, of, for Virginia. It's an exciting opportunity uh, to work with uh, the libraries at uh, VCU. We just have a brand new library renovation uh, we'll be able to show off, and uh, we will show you the best time possible when, uh, when the conference comes to town, November 2nd through 4th, 2016. I should ask, I know it's early days, but uh, anything uh, that you can share with us about plans uh, or something that might uh, might uh, help us uh, understand what what we might expect this fall? Oh, you know, I, I think the um, I think there was a really interesting tension at last year's conference um, between folks who are kind of spending most of their work focused on thinking about the role of OER in very formal uh, educational environments. So, for example, uh, adopting OER in place of commercial textbooks in a college or, or university classroom. And there's another group of people who are really interested in the power of OER in informal settings. And um, now there's some tension that emerged around those two themes uh, last year that just happened mostly in Twitter and in the blogs that were being written about conference sessions and somewhat during the Q&A. But it wasn't something we had planned for or set up. Um, but I think that uh, knowing that there is some of that feeling of what, what's the right pull and what's the right balance between those two approaches, I think you'll see that reflected in the program this year and hopefully um, it'll make for some conversations that are quite um, deep and quite thoughtful and um, you know, we've had critique from outside the field before at Open Ed. I think we'll see better critique from inside the field this year than we've ever had before. And and critique can sound scary, but you know, the Open Ed group again, it's uh, it's a friendly, thoughtful, loving group of people who are going to critique in ways that will be uh, they'll actually be productive. Uh, I don't anticipate it. There's never been anything that's happened at Open Ed that's been kind of nasty or downputting or this is not that kind of group of people. Um, but I think there will be some great tension to explore and some great critique to listen to and learn from, uh, which will be unique to this Open Ed, something that we haven't had before in the past. Thank you, Thank so, you much so much for, for taking, taking the, time the time to talk with us today, today. share some of the history and the mission and uh, the plans for the upcoming Open Education Conference. Anything you'd like to add in closing? No, looking forward to being there. Just excited to, uh, seems like every year Open Ed comes and we have a great time and then it's over. And then it's happening again <laughs> before you can figure out that a year has passed. So just excited to get, uh, get back.
scout east and, and be with you guys and, and have a great conference. So. Well, and speaking both personally and professionally, I want to offer you thanks for the leadership you've shown in uh, this arena and so many others over the years. And thank you for the for the great time that I've always experienced at these uh, open education conferences. Really looking forward to uh, the conference coming to town. Again, those dates, November 2nd through 4th, 2016. Where should people go to find out details as they emerge? OpenEdConference.org slash 2016. Okay, openedconference.org slash 2016. It appears somebody is trying to call me on my hotel room phone, so I think that's probably the sound of the bell. <laughs> Thank you very much, David. Thanks, Gardner. It's great to talk to you. I'll see you later. Okay, bye-bye.